Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys have had a great week and that your weekend is going well. I am glad that you're tuning in. I think this video will be very helpful for you. So something that I think a lot of people have trouble with and aren't properly taught how to do is one, how to read a UWorld question or any QBank question effectively, and two, how to take notes and study that question for maximum retention. So I'm going to go over how I was taught to read a QBank question. Uh, I was taught by a really great prof in the basic sciences. And I'm also going to go over how I study, annotate, and review the question, which is my own personal method. And so I just thought I'd throw that in there and share both of those tips with you today. So uh, on a second page that we'll go to, I've written up a mock UWorld question because legally I can't actually screen record the real thing, but you will see that it follows the same template. So I'm going to go over exactly how I read that question and after that how I study it. So let's go over there. Here is the question. Now before you pause and read the question yourself, what I want to say is that how I do every single question is I read the very last line first. And the reason I do that is because it can save you a lot of time on the questions that don't require you to actually read the case vignette. In this case, what is the most likely diagnosis? That's something I'm gonna have to read the entire vignette for. However, if the question said something like, what, what is uh, the most common cause or what is the cause of a subarachnoid hemorrhage? That is, the answer to that question is not going to be found anywhere in this vignette. That is just a fact that you either know or you don't know and can save you a couple of seconds uh, in your block of questions uh, by saving you that time not having to read through the vignette, okay? So you can go ahead and pause now, read the last line first, and then read the rest of the case scenario. Okay, so you have unpaused, you've read the question, and you likely have your differentials in your mind already. The reason that I don't have the multiple choice answers on the same page is because I want to emphasize that how I was taught was to not look at the answers before reading the vignette so that I can read the vignette or the case scenario and already start to come up with my own idea of what the diagnosis is. I don't think this part, you know, if you want to read the answers, it's not going to make a big difference, but that's just how I do it. So let's scroll down and see what our options are. So the differentials they're giving you are a migraine headache, tension headache, subarachnoid hemorrhage, cluster headache, or a viral encephalitis. Okay, so now you're gonna choose your answer. If you're on tutor mode, you're gonna look at the answer explanation. If you are not, then you'll just move on and do the rest of your 39 questions. So for this case scenario, let's say that I decide the answer is migraine headache. So I'm going to go down and look at the answer explanation, and I see, oh shoot, I didn't get the right answer. I mean, obviously I know what the answer is because I wrote this question, but my point when doing this is that I will review the UWorld question explanation if I got the answer wrong. I will review it if I got the answer right but guessed and wasn't really sure. And the only time that I don't review my UWorld explanation is if I got the answer correct and I'm 100% sure that I know enough of the uh, material on that topic to not have to review it again. Okay, so answer is D. I got it wrong, which means I'm going to review all of this information. Now, before you pause it and read all of this information, I like to start by just scrolling down to the educational objective. With the UWorld explanations, there's usually a good couple of paragraphs. I like to see the overall point of what I'm reading first, so I can see why the answer, why the correct answer is correct in a couple of sentences. So cluster headaches are brief, episodic headaches, et cetera, et cetera. You, you can see that, okay? So once I've done that, then I go back up to the top and read from the top down. I read why the answer D is correct and why all the other options are incorrect. So you guys can go ahead and pause if you want and read through all of those explanations or you can continue watching and I will go ahead and explain what happens next. Okay, so you have taken the time to read all this information. You now know everything about cluster headaches and tension headaches and migraine headaches. So we are going to go and make a note. Now, this is some a piece of advice that I will give you that you may already be, do, be doing or not, but this um, is kind of like my golden tip for you guys. 
aside from the one that's going to come after. <laughs> so I write all of my notes in a giant Word document. Let me see if I can see it here. Okay, so let me scroll to the top. This is a 140-something page document. This is just my CK notes. I used to write all of my UWorld notes in a paper notebook that I kept with me when I was studying for step one. When I started studying for step two, I realized that I had all this valuable information from my step one notes that I could not find because I could not do this. <laughs> Control F is a lifesaver, okay? So I recommend typing your notes, the amount of notes you're gonna have to be taking. Just to me, it doesn't make sense to waste my time writing. Writing can help with retention, yes, but the amount of time it takes for the amount of questions that you have to do for me is just, it's a big waste of time. So. I prefer to type out all my notes. I go by organ system. So as you can see here, cardiovascular, it goes down to gastrointestinal after that. And every single in, uh, bit of information that I learned from UWorld, I put into this personalized textbook, okay? And so that is what I'm gonna do. So this is my mock personalized textbook. This is the first time I've ever done a UWorld question, so this is what we're gonna do. Cluster headache. When I take my notes, I for each question, I only want to make two to three lines of information. So I'm going to condense everything that came from this several paragraphs into two to three lines, the most important information, because we're not trying to spend all of our energy and all of our muscle strength from our hands <laughs> typing everything out from UWorld, okay? So what's the most important information? So cluster headaches are brief, 15 minutes, two, three hours. MC is most common in males, okay? Associated with lacrimation, rhinorrhea, and we also learn what the treatment options are. So I'm gonna do abortive therapy, okay, and then I didn't learn what the prophylactic treatment options were from this question stem, however, sometime down the line I might or I might choose to look it up now and I can put that information there for later, okay? Now, I'm not going to leave it at that because cluster headache may be the right answer, but I chose migraine and that means that clearly I don't have a good grasp on how migraine headaches typically present, so I'm going to go and make a separate note for migraine, okay? so. Nausea and vomiting, visual disturbances. So there we go. I think I condensed pretty much all the information that I got from this question explanation. Okay. So now I have everything that I pulled out from that question scenario. Now I can move on to the next question and repeat this system for all of the questions that I got wrong or got correct but guessed on in that question block. I'm going to just pretend that we have a whole page of notes here, okay? So, the whole block is over, all my notes are done now, what do I do? The biggest tip that I can recommend to you, well the second biggest, I think I already said that once earlier, <laughs> is that you review your notes again and again and again, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So. A lot of people really like to use flashcards. I think flashcards are a great resource, particularly Anki. However, I don't personally have the desire to retype out all my notes and put them in flashcard form. I use this page and this uh, method of note taking as my flashcard. So what does that mean? So once I've gone over and made all of my notes, then I review them all again, top to bottom. So I will glance at my Word document and I see cluster headache. Obviously, I might, you know, see a little bit about the first line and that gives a little bit away, but there's a couple more lines that I haven't seen. So cluster headache. Then I look away or I close my laptop or whatever and I remember everything off the top of my head. Either verbally I say it out loud or in my head I just kind of go over it in my mind. So cluster headache are um, 
episodic, more common in males, last 15 minutes to three hours. Um, that's all I can remember off the top of my head. And then I look at it again and I see, oh, okay, I forgot that it's associated with lacrimation, rhinorrhea, conjunctival erythema. So I look away and then I go over everything that I can remember again, okay? And then I keep doing that until I can remember all of the um, bullet points that I have made in my notes for that topic. Then I move on to migraine. I look away. Okay, what do I know about migraine? Okay, last several hours duration. It's associated with aura. Um, it's associated with visual disturbances. Okay, I didn't remember that it's uh, associated with or that it's unilateral, what have you. Then I look away and try and remember it again. Do you get the idea of what I'm trying to show you? Like, this is how I study my notes. And it wasn't until I started um, reviewing my notes like this that I saw a change in my scores and in my retention. But it doesn't end there <laughs> because... The biggest impact that you will see as far as uh, maximizing your attention will be this. I review this, uh, this page of questions in the style that I just showed you the same day. Let's do this in caps lock just to really emphasize. The same day. Then I review this and do it the exact same way the next day. And then I do it again between five to seven days later, okay? This is a lifesaver. My scores plateaued for the longest time and I didn't start to see a change until I implemented spaced repetition. There's lots of research about spaced repetition, how it can maximize your retention. It's true, it works. A lot of times I feel like people do their QBank questions and they think, oh, reading through the question is enough, that'll help me remember it. Or, oh, reading through the questions, I wrote my notes, I'll remember it. No. That might help you remember some questions. It might help you remember, you know, migraine lasts several hours, that it's associated with nausea and vomiting. But once you do 40 more questions the next day, and 40 more questions the day after that, and 40 more questions the day after that, you're not going to remember all of these little details, right? And that's where boards get you. Boards get you on the tiny little details. And spaced repetition is your best tool to remember those tiny little details because you're not just looking at it once. You're looking at it three on three separate occasions or more if you want to do more, okay? So I hope that helps you guys. I wish that I had someone walk through exactly how they went uh, and study their year old questions. Thankfully, I had a really great prof who showed me how to read a year old question and um, kind of how to break it down. But it took me a long time to figure out how I needed to actually extract the most important information and how to make that information stick. So I'm hoping that walking through this the way that I did will be helpful for you. And I would love to know if it is. Please leave a comment below if you implement this strategy and that it works for you, or if you have any other strategies that you want to share with the community um, that work for you uh, and might resonate with some other people more than this does because we all need to help each other out, okay? So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone you know who might be struggling uh, with understanding how to take their notes from a Q-Band question. I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great weekend and talk to you soon. Bye.